In this video, I'm going to be going over 20.5, the PASS criterion, P6, which is about radiotherapy, how it works, the principles and the devices used. So we're going to kick off by explaining how we produce X-rays for megavoltage therapy. As I'll be starting off with this diagram here. This is a schematic diagram of a linear accelerator, sometimes called a LINAC for short. Okay, what we do with the linear accelerator are a range of things, and it all takes place in this lead casing here. Lead absorbs X-rays, so it stops any stray X-rays going where we don't want them. And so that's the lead casing there. And there are three main components that you need to label in this LINAC. They are firstly, we have a cathode filament in here. And what this does, this cathode, is produce, e produce electrons by a process called thermionic emission. So we have Thermonic emission takes place here. That produces our electrons. Okay? And uh, what happens during thermonic emission is that the cathode is negatively charged and it's heated up and it essentially boils off electrons. That produces electrons for us. Now here we have a vacuum. And that vacuum is necessary so that electrons are not obstructed by air molecules. So we've got a vacuum here. We need no air there. Those electrons then, we want those to start moving very fast from left to right here. So we're going to need an electric field to do that. We need a high voltage supply. That high voltage supply is connected between these two points. That's the negative. So the electrons are repelled from there. That's the cathode, it's negative. And this is the anode. That's positive, so the electrons are attracted towards that. They're accelerated through here, and then they crash into the anode here. And when they hit the anode, they experience a large deceleration. Okay? We've got a large deceleration going on here, and when electrons experience a large deceleration like this, they, their, their energy, their kinetic energy is converted into heat and x-rays. So we've got heat and x-rays being produced. Now, the anode it's going to absorb that heat. So it's going to get very hot here. And the x-rays will go out through this aperture in the lead casing. So we've got an opening there. Okay? Right. Now, you need to know the proportions of energy involved in this conversion. 99% gets turned into heat. Okay, so we've got from the kinetic energy of the electrons, 99% gets turned into heat, and 1% gets turned into x-rays. So most of the energy, and there's a lot of energy arriving at the anode in the kinetic energy of the electrons, most of it's getting turned into heat. So a consequence of that is that your anode will need to have a very high melting point, Tungsten is a good metal for this. There are other advantages to tungsten, but uh, for our purposes here, the high melting point is of significance. And uh, we also need a cooling system, which is what I've drawn here. So we need a way of dealing with all that heat. So that's how X-rays are produced. Now we've seen that before in 20.2. What's different here with radiotherapy is we need our x-rays to have higher energies. Okay, so uh, it's radiotherapy we need higher energies. 
energy x-rays. In order to be able to produce those higher energy or higher frequency x-rays, you can substitute in there that they are higher frequency as well, higher frequency x-rays, because x-ray energy is associated with their frequency, it's related to their frequency. And to do that, we're going to need to give our electrons more kinetic energy. The way that we do that is by having a higher voltage for our linear accelerator than for the di when we're using it for diagnosis. So, higher voltage in the linear accelerator means we can have larger kinetic energy electrons. So our electrons have more kinetic energy, so that means that although it's only 1% of the total energy input, we'll get a higher amount of energy getting credited into x-rays, so they, the x-rays have higher energies. So that's how we produce our x-rays. <coughs> now, the particular type of uh, radiotherapy we're focusing on for the P6 task is megavoltage therapy. <coughs> so let's just be clear about that. Now we need to explain how, what our aim is for radiotherapy and how we achieve that aim. So the aim is that we want to kill the tumour. We've got a patient, they've got a tumour in their body, cancerous cells, we want to kill off those cancerous cells. So how do we do that? <clears throat> We're going to expose the tumour to a lethal dose of radiation. That is x-rays. So we want to give this the tumour a lethal dose of radiation, but we want all the healthy tissue in the body to only receive a dose that it can survive. No, no more than what it can survive. So we want to expose that tumour without exposing health, healthy tissue to a lethal dose. We want that to receive a dose that it can survive. So how do we do that? This is a cross-section of the patient where the tumour is. And here's our tumour here. Not drawn to scale. But there's the tumour. Um, now, if we direct an X-ray beam through the, the body so that it targets the tumour, okay, so this is X-ray beam one. Okay, now, the tumour has received the dose, but so has this healthy tissue along the path of the beam. Okay? Let's now rotate our nano accelerator into a new position so it was here, okay, and now we're going to rotate it so that it's in a new position, and we'll fire the X-ray beam again through the tumour, so that it targets the tumour. You can see that it's passed through the tumour, so the tumour has received two lots of radiation exposure there, uh, but the rest of the beam goes through different healthy tissue this time. So all of the healthy tissue so far has only been exposed once, but the tumour has been exposed twice. And then we can rotate to a new position as well. There's beam three. Beam three targets the tumour again, so all of the beams are intersecting the tumour. And the healthy tissue so far has only received one dose, but the, the tumour has received three. And then you can do lots and lots of different positions. Obviously, being careful about the way that it would enter the body, so you need to avoid 
organs that are particularly sensitive to radiation exposure. And but we wouldn't necessarily go in from this part of the body because the beam would be travelling through a lot of healthy tissue before it reached the tumour. Now, as the beam travels through the body and through this healthy tissue, some of the energy would be absorbed along the way. So that means that there wouldn't be much uh, radiation reaching the tumour. So we wouldn't necessarily go in through that long, that large thickness of healthy tissue there. We might go in this way though. So we do it through multiple positions, multiple uh, paths through the tumour and probably go back over some of the ones we've already done. So the tumour receives a cumulative dose. And that is much larger than what the healthy tissue receives. So the, by doing this, we ensure that the healthy tissue only receives a dose that it can recover from, that it can survive. Okay? So So our tumour receives the lethal dose and the healthy tissue receives the dose that it can survive from. The other thing that we can do is we can have gaps in the, the doses that we administer to the patient. So um, the patient When you probably know this, that when a patient undergoes radiotherapy, they don't just go to hospital once, get exposed to radiation, and then that's it. But they will have multiple sessions of receiving the dose. And the, the gaps in between enable healthy tissue to recover from any radiation damage that, they, that it's experienced. Okay? So that's the point of having gaps there. But the cancerous tissue in the tumour, that can recover, that's not so good at recovering from radiation exposure. So we're giving the, the healthy tissue another advantage here. The healthy tissue gets the opportunity to recover, whereas the tumour can't recover as well. So these gaps in the sessions do help further uh, to maximise this effect of giving the lethal dose to the tumour and a survivable dose to the healthy tissue. And those are the points that you'll need to work through for this assignment. And if you've got any questions, then do ask in the comments and I'll try and get back to you as soon as possible.